What is OSR? What does it stand for? What does it mean? Why are people playing older versions of D&D &D when there's a perfectly good 5th edition available? I'm Maddie from Dicebreaker and I'm here to answer those questions and give you some insight into why so many of us are obsessed with decades old rules. To start with, let's clear up one probably quite confusing point. OSR stands for both Old School Revival and Old School Renaissance. It's merely a matter of preference which one you use, but the most common use is generally Old School Renaissance. And in basic terms, it's about playing games inspired by much earlier iterations of RPGs, mainly D&D. Those from the 70s and 80s, rather than the style of play we have now with things like 5th edition. The easiest way to explain what OSR is today, though, is to go back to when it all started. The year is 2000. Wizards of the Coast bought D&D from TSR and, hoping to put their stamp on the already popular game, created the 3rd edition. This brought a host of updates and changes, but most notably, it introduced the now iconic D20 system, as well as the open game license. This meant people could use D&D mechanics freely, without the same copyright issues they're used to, and can make things from their own dungeons and monsters to their very own adventures. However, despite this aspect being a welcome change, 3rd edition itself wasn't what all gamers were looking for. In online forums like Dragonsfoot, people started reminiscing on earlier versions of D&D, how they felt playing it. Many people posting here felt that 3rd edition brought too many rules into combat and missed the freedom of an old style fight and the aspect of trying to avoid them altogether. So, with this new open game license, a few creators decided to delve back into the old rules and release them for players who were nostalgic for their previous games, or even for newcomers who liked the sound of that style of play but weren't in the hobby some 20 or 30 years prior when those original books were released. Or even for those who did manage to grab an early copy of D&D &D from a car boot sale or something, but found that without the context of playing war games in the 70s, it was pretty hard to decipher. So, in 2006, the Old School Reference and Index Compendium, or OSRIC, was created. Made by Stuart Marshall and Matthew Finch, it used the rules of Advanced Dungeons and Dragons, released between 1977 and 1979, basically compiling them into a new book anyone could access. And the community loved it. These people who had been dreaming of their old games had a way to play them again, and the newcomers could stop trolling through vintage sales and access an actual rule set. With all these people playing Osric, experiencing old school games and really enjoying them, the old school renaissance was born. Osric itself is what's described as a retro clone. These are games that basically copy and release the original D&D rules. However, with talks of OSR now gaining popularity, people started to look beyond just copying the rules and wanted to emulate the feeling of old school gaming while still updating the play. Magazines such as Fight On and Knock Spell were created just to cover all of the news and new ideas coming out around OSR games, bringing the movement to more people, which meant opening it up to more new ideas. But before we get into that though, what are the elements that make an OSR game if you can just get rid of the basic rule set? This is something that's up for debate in the community, of course, but there are a few general themes that most people seem to agree on. Firstly, old school games are much more loose and free with the rulings. By that I mean there aren't rules for every encounter or move, and that's okay. Rather than looking up how to fight underwater, or if your climbing speed would allow you to make a specific jump, DMs just rule in the moment. 
Creative play is highly encouraged, so situations like that where you might try to stab an ogre in the eye to blind it or trip up a centaur are going to come up. But as long as it makes sense and the DM agrees, you have tons of flexibility with what you can do. The second main thing you'll find in an OSR game is that your own ability to do something matters more than your characters. What this means is that you can't just do an investigation role to discover all of the different secrets in the room. You've got to tell the DM exactly where you're looking and what you're doing to find those secret doors and solve those puzzles. If you're going up to a bookshelf, you need to find the book to pull it out to open the door or run your hands along the flagstones to find those traps. This is where the idea of adventurers always carrying a 10-foot pole into a dungeon comes from. The next idea is a focus on exploration. Old school games give XP out based on the loot you collect, not the monsters you kill. And I honestly kind of love this. It means you won't just run around killing everything you discover. Instead, you'll be digging into the corners of dungeons and trekking to distant lands to follow rumors of treasure hoards. So, when players encounter bandits on the road, their first thought isn't just going to be, oh, let's murder them all and move on. Instead, maybe they'll bargain with them, distract them, or even just try to sneak past. Because sometimes the best approach is to avoid any kind of combat altogether. And that brings me to one of the last main things that stands out in an OSR game, which is they're not balanced. The world isn't split into levels for you to work through. Dragons are dangerous, and if you find one in a dungeon, it will likely kill you. It makes everything feel much more realistic when playing like this. You're not medieval superheroes, which is what a lot of OSR fans felt D&D was turning into. Instead, you're regular folk, brave or stupid enough to make your living through looting long-lost tombs and labyrinths. And these are scary places most people avoid for good reason. You need to be smart about how you tackle every situation, otherwise you'll probably end up dead. Plus, that threat of character death is a great way to drive a game forward. Risks feel very real. It adds a lot of tension if the next room could be your last. All of these points, though, are just some of the things that go into an OSR game. If you want to get into more detail on what to expect, you should check out The Old School Primer by Matthew Finch. It's a great intro for anyone transitioning from other RPGs such as D&D 5e to an OSR game. So, with all these ideas in mind, people started to tweak those old rules to create totally new games that still replicated the old school feel of play. Mazes and Minotaurs reimagined original D&D as if Gygax and Arneson were first inspired by Greek mythology rather than medieval fantasy. The Black Hack streamlined the rules to make jumping into a game quick and simple. And there are even games that have totally different rule sets. Dungeon World is an RPG that has all of the familiar thrilling dungeon crawls and fights you could want, but it actually uses the Powered by the Apocalypse system, which is a modern indie rule set. Then there's Morkborg, which is a bleak apocalyptic world, giving the OSR a heavy metal twist. Or even Mouse Ritter, which sees you facing a dangerous world as tiny little mice. There are so many options for getting into OSR now, whether you want to try the rule set or the feel of a game from decades ago. If you're someone who finds comfort in 80s movies of swords and sorcery, in battered copies of old fantasy books, and dreams of exploring every corner of a magical world, this could very well be the next RPG genre you should try. If you want a closer look at a specific OSR game though, go check out my video on Old School Essentials, where I enjoy tormenting my players in weird and wonderful dungeons. For more videos on RPGs though, just stay right here and subscribe to the Dicebreaker channel. You can also hit the join button below for all sorts of extra content beyond the tabletop. 
There's also diesbreaker.com where you can find news and articles from all of our wonderful contributors. But for now though, good luck in that dungeon and have a lovely day.